Can I make a full income selling print on demand shirts in an Etsy shop? Do I keep spending time and money on trying to grow my Etsy shop even though I don't see the results coming? How many holiday listings is a good goal? And when is it too late to start listing for Halloween and Christmas? I'm a six-figure Etsy seller, and I'm going to be answering all of these questions for you today. I recently released this video here, Beginner Mistakes, Six Deadly Mistakes New Etsy Sellers Make. In that video, I go into depth about using Creative Fabrica in the wrong way, listing too late in your niches, getting bogged down with thinking that you can't compete with yourself, and so you don't make more similar listings to maybe something that you're getting traction with. I talk about not focusing on people who are copying your designs, not watching enough YouTube content to help you with your mindset and with the strategies that you need to implement in order to have a successful Etsy shop, and the concept of not being consistent enough with listing and listing at the right times. If you haven't watched that video, I do suggest you watch it after this one. I'll leave it linked up here and down in the description. Today, we're gonna address some questions that I thought were excellent questions in the comments of that video. I put that video together because they are all mistakes that I had to struggle through on my Etsy journey. And you're watching the channel No Friend Left Behind where my friends Shay, Lenata, and Mike share their Etsy journeys. And I've watched them make the same struggle. So we're trying to help you accelerate your journey so that you don't get stuck spending as much time learning these lessons as we did. The first question I want to address here is by one of our subscribers and they ask, hi, can I make a full income from a POD shirt store on Etsy? Is it worth it? I know that this is a question that I initially had when I started my Etsy shop. I came across a video. I'll link it up here and I'll link it down below. It was the Life Hackers. It was the very first POD Etsy video I had ever come across. And my interest was instantly piqued. I was already thinking about starting an Etsy shop, selling farmhouse mirrors, which was going to be a ton of work. And so the concept of print on demand, they had me. In case this is one of the first videos you're watching on this topic, print on demand is the concept of a print shop like Printful or Printify who prints up your designs on so many different products that you could choose from. I primarily do shirts and sweatshirts. And then they ship them out to your customers for you. But then I had to figure out, well, did they just get lucky or are they just trying to sell me something and this success isn't really something that's repeatable and that I can also do? So I started going down a rabbit hole and listening to some more videos. I do think that I am cautious. I do think that I'm fairly trusting, but I do also believe that I'm pretty good at discerning people's intentions behind what they're doing. And so I quickly came to the conclusion that these were truly successful Etsy sellers and that they were business owners also. They had a business mindset. So I knew that YouTube was going to be making them money. And that is one of the things that was fueling their creating a YouTube channel and sharing that information. But I also discerned that I did believe that their Etsy success was true and that they were adding value to the YouTube marketplace, if you will, by sharing their experiences. They were taking something that they were good at and capitalizing upon it through making a, creating another business like YouTube with it. I came to this conclusion within probably two weeks of listening to them. And so I leaned in and I leaned in hard to, I can do this, I can make this work. I listened to a lot of their content, which was very motivating, which also led me to hear interviews by people like Cassie Johnson, whom I completely believed their story. It made me realize that, hey, if they can do this, I can do this too. This is repeatable. And so now you might find yourself at that same crossroads. Why are YouTubers sharing this with me? Can I trust this? Can I believe this? 
And so for whatever it's worth, I have been very honest about my story on No Friend Left Behind, the channel you're watching, and on my other channel, Simply Shauna, which I'll leave a link to that down below as well. I was a fourth grade teacher with zero interest in the entrepreneurial journey or spirit because I had never had it awakened in me. No one had ever shared something with me that I thought that, hey, maybe I could do that. And maybe I am capable of building something for myself. And, and maybe it is actually possible to have a scalable type of business, a business that makes you more and more money for the same amount of input of time. I think one of the things that make it so hard to believe that we can build outrageously profitable businesses like this online. One, coming especially from my educator background, being a fourth grade teacher and going to college to get that degree and then to use that to make a lot less than I do now teaching, I couldn't wrap my head around, oh, you mean I'm going to do this thing that does not require a college education and you're telling me that it's possible to make many times over what I'm making with my college education? No, that's not a thing. That doesn't doesn't work like that. If I want to make more money, I need to go get a law degree. I need to go get a, my doctorate. I need to be, maybe pursue another profession. But whatever it is, it's got to be backed by a degree. So if you're thinking that same thing, I'm addressing it. I thought the same thing as well. And it's, that's, it's not true. <laughs> I think the other thing that I had to get over that was keeping me back, so I imagine it keeps a lot of other people back as well. With teaching, it is socially acceptable. It's expected that you got to put four years into school. You're going to come out owing money on that. But, you know, that's the price you pay to get this, this good job that is reliable and you're going to get a paycheck every month. So you put your four years in, but then once you have that degree, you are going to start your career. And the very first day that you start your career, you're making money. So two weeks later, you've got a paycheck because you're getting paid for the hours that you are putting in. Now with business and creating your own business, and I'm not just talking about Etsy, you could go open your own pizza shop, you could go whatever it is, your own lawn shop, you know, your own lawn company, all of these things, these don't require college educations. They don't require degrees, but they require a lot of elbow grease. You don't go open a lawn company and make profits right away. You don't go open a pizza shop and make profits right away. Now, I think those are way more committed business people, way more committed entrepreneurs because they understand that they are going to have to buy all the lawn equipment and then they're going to have to spend time acquiring the customers. With the pizza shop, they understand I'm going to have, I'm going to be in the red for like three years because I'm going to have to go put, you know, get loans to open this pizza shop and then to create a name for myself and understand how to get customers in there. I do think with Etsy shop owners, we come with maybe not the right, right mindset. At least I know that that was for me, it was like a weird thing for me to understand. Oh, I'm just going to open an Etsy shop and I'm going to start making money when that's just not how it works. So you don't have to put anywhere near the amount of money. I mean, I think I invested like a hundred bucks when I started on my design app really and a couple of listings, but you think it's a di whole different mindset shift that you have to get into of, you know, you're, you're going to work for months on your Etsy shop. I mean, I was putting in anywhere between 30 and 40 hours a week. It was, it was a full-time job because I so wanted this and I understood the, I, after listening to videos, I quickly embraced this and understood how it was going to work. And I knew that I was going to have to get a lot of listings out there and get better at the listings in order to start making any, any amount of income that would be worth the amount of time I had been putting in before it would start scaling and become way worth it. But it's such a different mindset because we're used to, we get a job, we get a paycheck two weeks later, and that's regular. But when you're building your own business, it does not work like that. You have to build the business before you start getting the payments. So the answer to the question, can I make a full income from my POD shirt store? The first eight months of my shop, I made pennies per hour. 
wasn't worth it if you just look at the first eight months. And if I had given up, my story would be and my answer would be, no, it wasn't worth it. It was the worst thing I ever did. But I kept going. And by month nine, 10, 11, I was making $1,000 profit for the month. 2,500, the following month, 4,500. The first calendar year, January through December, that I was on Etsy, I made $33,000 profit. The second calendar year, I shot up to $107,000 profit. I'm giving you profit numbers, not revenue. Money that was my income. I still had to pay taxes on it, but that's after all my Printify fees, my Printful fees, my Etsy ads, my listing fees. Everyone complains about the Etsy fees, but oh my gosh, I'm, you know... <laughs> Second, like first calendar year opening my new business, $33,000 profit. That's almost as much as I was making teaching. Second calendar year, $107,000 profit. What? Come on. Yes, it's worth it. And then my third calendar year, I made $160,000 profit. We're working on my fourth calendar year now to be continued. I'll let you know how it goes. But this was my favorite question. I've got a few more good questions for you, but this was my favorite question, and I had so much to say about it. The answer is yes. If you're wondering if this is worth it, yes, yes, it is worth it. The second question was really more of a comment that this subscriber was highlighting. Karen says, great content as usual. I, thank you, Karen, by the way. I've struggled with the why do I keep spending time and money when the results aren't coming. She goes on to say, and have nearly thrown in the towel a couple of times. Keep going, Karen. I'm proud of you. I am much more optimistic what my shop might be able to do if I just keep researching and listening. I'm anxiously anticipating Q4. Thanks, Shauna. And she let me know ice cream is her favorite because in that last video, I asked what your favorite dessert was. And so I really wanted to kind of address that feeling of why do I keep spending time and money if I'm not getting the results I want? First and foremost, you're going to spend a lot of time. You're gambling with your time. Get comfortable with that. Because if you want to be an entrepreneur, you're going to be gambling with your time. You're either going to be gambling with a lot of time and money if you want to be an entrepreneur, or you're going to gamble with your time or money with this particular space, making an Etsy shop with print on demand, the gamble is much bigger with your time. You shouldn't be gambling with a whole lot of money. So you really should be putting like maybe $150 into this right from the get-go. You're going to have to get a design app. And you can try the free version of design apps, but it's going to be almost impossible because you need to be able to have transparent backgrounds for your designs. And a lot of the free versions of these design apps don't allow you to have transparent backgrounds. And then you're going to need great graphics. So you might want to get yourself also a subscription to Creative Fabrica. I'll leave a link to them down below. If you have Canva, Canva has quite a few good graphics. If you're using GoDaddy Studios or Kittle, their graphics aren't as fabulous, so you'll probably want something to help you with the graphic piece there too. But all in all, that's not going to cost you a whole lot. You could do monthly subscriptions, which will bring it down. Like maybe you could do it for under $30 a month. But if you times that by 12 months, it'll be more than if you did like the yearly annual plan they have. So it just depends on how committed. When I got started, I did the monthly subscription. And then within two months, I switched to the annual because I knew that I was going to do one year, 2000 listings. That, that became my thing. That was what I was doing. So I might as well has, you know, just spend less and do the annual. If you're a beginner, you should not be dumping a lot of money into your Etsy ads. Yes, you're going to have to spend 20 cents per listing. And so that might rack up, hopefully, if you are doing a lot of listings and you should be. It's the only way you're going to get better at it. So 20 cents times, let's say, 150 listings for the month. That's 30 bucks. 30 bucks in listings. And I would probably be trying to do more than 150, but I think 150 for most folks is probably a really good goal. I just went a little crazy when I got started. I wanted to do 2,000 listings for the year, which that breaks down to over 12 months. 
it broke down to like 166, 167 listings a month. So it's pretty similar to what I was doing. A lot of folks probably won't get quite that many. I think that I was a little more zealous than the average person coming out the gate. But if you want to know what I did, that is what I did. I had, I got 2000 listings up in the first year. Some months were bigger than others. Being a school teacher, I had the summer off. So I might've been doing more like 200, 250 listings a month at that time. And maybe more like a hundred listings a month during the, the months of school. So really, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be spending a ton. If you're losing money because you're also doing a bunch of Etsy ads, save that for later. Turn those off. You should be, you know, if you've done Etsy ads for 30 days and they're still not profitable, I do have an Etsy ads resource that I've created. It comes free in my membership. I'll be making it more available come this December. And so you could keep your eyes open for that if that's something you'd be interested in. This Etsy ads resource is free within the membership. So if you're in the membership, please don't go purchase it. But it's also a la carte if, you know, I know memberships aren't for everybody and that is another expense. So if you are, you feeling like you're in a place where you're ready for Etsy ads and you think you can make them profitable, but you think you need a little extra help with them, I will leave it linked down below. This next comment comes from Sweetums 101 and I always love seeing Sweetums comments down in my videos. Shauna, I so needed this one. I can't thank you enough. I have a small shop and all of my bestsellers and popular now designs get stolen as is and sold outside of Etsy and my sales have plummeted as a result. I've been so discouraged and down about it and you're the only person who's addressed how to deal with the emotional toll that comes with that and how to overcome it. I know strategically that POD is a volume numbers game, but I've been feeling like a content machine lately, coming up with ideas just for thieves to steal, just as they start to get traction. I've wanted to quit so many times, but I'm still going to soldier on and I'll be watching this video on repeat to help me get over this hurdle. Thank you for all that you do. I also rewatch your interview with Cassie, where you said, lean into your success by being proud of yourself, for not giving up. Your words and encouragement are truly a salve to my soul. I know it's so frustrating when someone copies our designs and I've been there exactly where Sweetums has said. I've had my stuff copied and brought all over Etsy. I've had people get bestsellers on things that I had a bestseller on and then I lost my bestseller on my original work. I've had people take my mock-up photos, my exact mock-up photos and take it over to their own website and basically create a website with a bunch of my listings in it. This is part of being successful. And so if you're already experiencing that, then congratulations, that's awesome, because you're on your way to being a six-figure seller. I can guarantee, I feel very, very comfortable making this guarantee. Not one six-figure seller that you know that's sharing their story on YouTube hasn't had to struggle with this and doesn't continue to struggle with this. You have to remember that you cannot control what other people do. There's no controlling that. And that is good. That is a good tip for not just Etsy, but for life. You cannot control the behavior of others, but you can always choose how to respond to it. A possible response to people copying you is for you to shut your Etsy shop down or to start listing really slowly or without any gusto and to kind of give up on your dream of entrepreneurship, on your dream of building an Etsy shop that's gonna bring you extra income. That would be such an unfortunate response. You just gave someone else all of the power. Or you can choose to list more, blow them out of the water. There's a couple other things you could decide to do. You could decide to take your prices down on that particular listing to drum up the sales back and then raise the prices once you get your sales velocity back. You can report them if you feel that the copy was enough of a direct copy that you'd be validated in reporting them. I can tell you how I've chosen to deal with this. I've chosen to list more. Oh, really? You're going to copy that? Oh, well, now I'm going to make like 10 more listings that are even better. And I've grown my shop into a six-figure shop, and I've been dealing with this well before I was ever a six-figure shop. Decide what your response is going to be. Do not let it mess you up emotionally because that's going to mess you up creatively, and it's also going to mess up your mindset. Don't give anyone else that power. Don't give anyone that power in any area of your life. You cannot control what others do. You control your response to that. I am really going to encourage you right now not to respond with that in a way that gives up your power to throw in the towel. Instead, 
check off the little box of all the little things that need to happen between where you're at right now in your Etsy journey and you becoming where you want to be, whether that be making an extra thousand dollars a month, whether that mean averaging out to making six figures profit a year, whatever it is, no one gets to that point without being upset that they're getting copied. No one, none of us. So you could choose right now to just check off that box. All right, good. Another step in the direction that I wanted to get. Our next question, another great question. Thank you so much, Shauna. Always so helpful. When would you say it's too late to start listing for Halloween and Christmas? You really don't want to be consistently jumping in near like due dates of when you should be done listing something and really want to be done, you know, have your idea of getting it, everything listed a good three or four weeks before the event. So a good three or four weeks before Halloween. Sometimes I'll keep listing after I've already got traction a little closer to like maybe the three week mark of that holiday coming up. But once you get to the two week mark, now you don't have time to be seen in the algorithm for sure, because people need to buy it right then and there in order for it to be delivered in time. I start listing for Halloween and Christmas back in July, and I keep listing for Halloween right until the first week of October and for Christmas right until Black Friday. Again, you don't want to be in the position of always jumping in near the end of these listing windows. And if you need help with listing windows, I've created a resource. It's a calendar resource. It shows you listing windows throughout the year. I've got actually a couple of them. I'll leave them linked down below. I've got a Q4 specific one. I've got a general niche that's just kind of an overview of the whole year. And I have a teacher specific one. Lots of niches, lots of testing windows, lots of listing windows throughout the different months of the year of when you should be starting the list and when you should have everything listed by. Vivian actually left a comment on this very same video that we're looking at the comments from. She said, the Q4 calendar and the general niche calendar are so worth it. I'm so glad Vivian, I've had the chance to talk to Vivian quite a bit. So I know she's really implementing what she's finding in those resources. It has changed how and when I post and my results. And that's what's important there. With Christmas specifically, I think that I'd always be willing if I were starting a new shop or I didn't realize I was supposed to be listening for Christmas, I'd probably just take my stab at it, swing my bat, take my shot, no matter when I became aware of it, right up until Black Friday weekend. And Brittany said, how many listings are good per week for the holidays? And to that I say as many as you as many as you possibly can, right? So we all have different amounts of time that we can put into this and different responsibilities in our lives. When I first got started, I was doing around anywhere between 30 and like 50 listings a week, depending on whether I was teaching at the time or if I had off time off of school. I stopped watching TV. I stopped looking at social media. I still, I'm not really on Facebook or any of those things because I just kind of got out of the loop with that stuff during that time because I became very, very, very motivated to get this going. So every minute that I spent doing that was one less minute I could spend creating a listing for my Etsy shop. After I went full time for in my Etsy shop and I quit my teaching job, I decided to do 500 listings for the holidays. And so you could take that and divide that up. I started in July. And if you take that and divide that up amongst 16 weeks, it winds up being around 80 listings per week, which is a lot. I would never have been able to do that while I was teaching. So I'd say if all you have time for is 10, then do 10. But if you can find time from somewhere else and make sure that you're doing 20, then do that. And I would go as far as to say that if you're watching TV on the weekend or you're doing something else that maybe you have the bandwidth and the mental capacity to say, oh, I could give this up so that I could do some more. I could do five more if I give this up. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And if you're still feeling healthy mind-wise, then put that time into it also. It's temporary that you have to put that much time into this because once you scale your shop, you could put a little less time and continue making great sales. If you're still here, please go down into the comments and let me know what you are dressing up as on Halloween. I'm still undecided, but I usually do like to do something that me and Tucker get to dress up as together. One year I was Tinkerbell and he was Peter Pan. And if you're a true blood lover, one year I was Sookie and he was Sam. That might be one of my favorites. Also, while you're down there, don't forget to boop the like button if you enjoyed this content. And don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this popping up in your feed. We are wishing you a great day and we'll see you next time.